Well, if you didn't know, this time of year, all you have to do is drive about 30 minutes south of downtown Dallas to find the place that has simply traveled back in time. Yeah, it is Ren Fair season at Scarborough Fair, and that's where we find our Brittany Rainey this morning. Brittany, we are ready to be transported <laughs> back to, I believe, about the 16th century, and it looks like you and your guests are, are ready as well. Yes, we definitely are. I mean, look at this. I have a great costume to match the fire whipping. Look at that. This is Adam Kraft. Did you know he actually has the world Dennis record for fire whipping? He's actually going to light some of these whips on fire. How cool is that? But you were telling me a little bit about some of your amazing accomplishments. I mean, you have Guinness World Records. Tell us a little bit about those. Right, I've set 34 different Guinness World Records. Uh, just a month ago, I went to Italy and set a Guinness World Record for most Jenga blocks whipped from a Jenga set. The record to beat was seven, and I did eight. That is incredible. How do you even come up with something like that to think about knocking some Jenga blocks out of a Jenga set? Well, Guinness has many categories for records. Some of them have been established a long time, like I had the record for the longest whip ever cracked at 238 feet. So that's a very old record. And then some records is created by either myself or new creative people. And then if Guinness likes it, they put it in the book. And you also have the heaviest whip ever cracked? The heaviest whip. That is a whip that I crack uh, in my show out here at the Scarborough Renaissance Festival four times daily throughout the whole run. It weighs 27 pounds. And is that a whip that you made yourself, right? It's a whip that my dad and I made together. That is so cool. All right, so you were telling me a little bit about how to do this, so let's give a little quick yes, demonstration. Yes, whip cracking is a snap. It Let me is. quick demonstrate to you okay. how to do it. You're just going to lay it in front. You'll swing it up, bending your elbow. Nice. You've got it. Okay. One more. Oh, we didn't get it that time. But you have some toilet paper that I'm going to attempt to cut. Yes, Let's Brittany, see if, if you I can, can do, do this, this trick. You can have a job out at the festival. See if you can cut the toilet paper. Nice! Yay! I have a new job, guys. I don't know if I'm coming back. But, I mean, we mentioned he's a fire whip. We can't leave you without showing you him with a fire whip. I mean, he actually got into this because of Indiana Jones. That's a great reason to get into fire whipping, isn't it? All right. I'm going to let you do your thing and back up and get out of the way here. Ooh. Woo! Oh, my. Well, there you go, guys. How cool is that? <laughs> hey, if you want to see it in person, you can come out to the Scarborough Renaissance Festival. Check out Adam Crack. Oh, my goodness. He's also kind of a juggler with the firewood. It just keeps getting cooler and cooler, guys. I, I got a speechless. Yeah, and, and cool is not necessarily the word I yeah, would be really using with all that this. fire, but nonetheless, yeah. quite impressive. Ho hopefully somebody's standing by with a fire extinguisher. I think the toilet paper is still on fire, too, so hopefully that gets put out as well. We don't want the Scarbo affair burning down. And I don't think Scott Paget wants you to have a whip coming back to work at all. I don't think you would. Oh, that's awesome. Well, it sure will be a fun weekend out at the fair, so we can't wait to see what else you've got to show us coming up in the next half hour place you guys may know called um, Waxahachie and a place that is essentially travels back in time. <laughs> yeah, it is Ren Fair season at the Scarborough Fair and that's where we find our Brittany Rainey. Brittany, earlier you had some whips in hand. <laughs> we hear a, a, a fiddle, a flute, a something behind you. <laughs> We got all kinds of instruments. We've got the Bards of Opportunity. They are dressed beautifully, getting us into the ambiance. But I've traded in my whip. I am now actually at the Phoenix Forge, and I'm hanging out with a blacksmith. So we have Alan Bedgood here, and you are a second-generation blacksmith. Yeah, that's great. How okay. long? So how long have you been doing it? Uh, since I was seven, so about 34 years now. Oh my goodness! And you started off with the jewelry, the silversmithing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, my dad was a jeweler by trade whenever we got into it, and then we just were fascinated by steel, so we expanded our repertoire into other metals. Very cool. So tell me a little bit about how it works when you're going to create something. So what's happening here? Uh, right now we're working on a yard arm that we started uh, earlier this season and uh, come up with our design and try and accomplish that. You try and make all these different elements, so we're actually going to try and make one of the elements that's going to go into that yard arm, correct? Yeah. All right, I'm kind of excited, guys, because we did not test this out at all, so are we ready <laughs> to go? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Actually, we're up to heat right now. Okay, look at that. We're up to heat. So I'm guessing that's step one. Hammer. Okay, I've got my hammer. We had to find a lighter hammer for me, guys. <laughs> okay, here we go. <laughs> 
I'm a little nervous. Oh boy, <laughs> it's a square. So now I just hit it? Yeah, strike oh, it. I... Just keep whacking. Good lord. You must be incredibly strong for this. <laughs> so is this usually a two-person job? You have someone holding it and then someone hitting it? Or are you doing this all on your own? Uh, depends. Uh, larger pieces like this, we use a striker. But well, we typically use it a little bigger hammer, too. <laughs> Did you hear that? They usually use a bigger hammer than this. He actually has a ginormous one back here that I can barely even lift, so I can't even imagine swinging that. Okay, so we keep hammering this, sure. and then this is supposed to come to a point, and this would probably take me, what, like three days to get it to where it's supposed to go? <laughs> uh, about a half hour. <laughs> about a half hour. I think I would be well done before that. But I want to talk a little bit about some of your shop here, because you're actually demonstrating <laughs> all the days that you're out at the Scarborough Renaissance Festival. And then you have your shop in there. So if somebody wants to do a little shopping and look at your jewelry, they can do that in there. Yeah, yeah. Very good. Well, thank you so much. You. I got my workout in, guys. You know, I'm trying to find different trades. You know, I might mix it up <laughs> in meteorology. I could not be a blacksmith because this is way too much work. You can tell I am out of breath. Hey, but well, you're a good sport. Come back and visit. <laughs> Great sport. Great sport. You're officially now MC Hammer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, and, and you don't that. need to go to the gym today because I think that was enough of a workout. That's right. We'll call it good. All right. Thanks, yes. Brittany. <laughs> We'll be right <laughs> it is Ren Fair season at the Scarborough Fair, and that is where we find our Brittany Rainey. Brittany, you've tried a little bit of uh, whip whip learning. I don't know what that would be called. You've you've tried blacksmithing, yes. and and we saw before break snapper? you had a sword in your hand. I do have a sword in my hands. You know, I've actually been learning some skills from a very talented pirate. We have Francesca here. Ah, it is I, Francesca Arabiata, the Duchess of Parma. I am the vastest sword in all of Italy. I am part of a wonderful show here at Scarborough Renaissance Festival. It's called The Nature of Mercy. We are a pirate show, and we are interactive for children, but still oh. fun for adults, you see. The show has been around for 30 years, and it was written to teach children children the power of making good decisions in life but having fun while they're doing it oh, and we teach so them good. about mercy mercy it's and always also a good thing fighting. you've got to have a little sword fighting oh god captain assist you did great what i believe in you you oh, better save her captain <laughs> 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 Shall we show him mercy? I think we shall. What do you think? Mercy? Please? Please? I'm going to steal your sword. Oh. <laughs> She's yes, I'm going to take the sword and go. <laughs> Honor is a gift that one gives to himself, you know. Oh, that is a great message. See, I love these guys. Not only are you learning sword fighting, but the kids are learning very great lessons as well. Thank you guys so much. And you can actually catch them Scarborough Renaissance Fair all this month and next month. Billy? Thank you for sparing my life. You're welcome. going on. I made the right decision. Hey, I have to also give a shout out to uh, your photojournalist, which is our chief photographer, Billy Sexton. It kind of looked like he should have been yes. in an action movie there with the way he was shooting that scene. That Billy's was great. Billy's covered, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah. I think he's sometimes a stuntman as well. <laughs> he is great. Brittany is two fisting there with both Avoiding swords. Avoiding the swords and whips. That's crazy. <laughs> All right. Well, it looks like you're having fun this Friday morning. And, and folks can, again, participate for the next two months in the Renaissance Festival that's going on down there in Waxahachie. So it'll be fun. What do you have for us now? <laughs> yeah. I can just. <laughs> I have something a little bit more tame, but it still includes fire. But we wanted to bring you some of the sounds of the Scarborough Renaissance Festival with the Bards of Opportunity. But there are a lot of artisans here at the Scarborough Renaissance Festival. I mean, just look at all this beautiful glasswork that we have here. So we are with Mylon Townsend. He is one of the artisans. You're actually a glass sculptor. I mean, and you create any number of things here. We have some dolphin sharks, mermaids, octopuses, and I love your birds. You are even creating some phoenixes, and that's what you're going to show us what you're doing right. now. 
Yep, I'm going to use this uh, opalescent glass, which changes depending on how you heat it. And you heat it up Ooh. to about 4,500 degrees. 4,000? My goodness. It feels nice in the morning here. It does. It's a little we're chilly. We're going to make a little phoenix just like that. Let me just sneak by okay. here. This is a multi-step process here, and he's okay. kind of done the magic of TV for us. Got part of it done. <laughs> so this phoenix, I keep it at about 1,100 degrees in the kiln. Wow. Now I'm just warming it up to 4,000. And I've got the tail feathers already made. They look just like this. Oh, they're beautiful. How long does it usually take you to make a, a phoenix like this, start it, to finish? Mm, there is no start to finish. No? As you said, it is a multi-step <laughs> process. Um, we can make several of them during a day. Oh, that is so cool. So when the glass is hot, you get two pieces of glass liquid, they actually flow together and melt together and become one piece of glass. Now I can soften it on both sides. Wow. This is and remarkable. then the glass becomes malleable. It almost looks like it's flying as you're able to turn it. Oh. This is what I love about the glass is this graceful curvilinear shape that's always been what's attracted to me from the very, very beginning. Oh, oh, and you've got another one you've got to put on. Two tail feathers that are going on. How long does it take you to maybe make just the tail feather for this? A couple minutes. <laughs> because you've been doing it, you've got this down. You're an expert at it. I mean, clearly, it's absolutely This is my stunning. 51st year making glass full time. Oh my gosh, and so people can actually come and watch you do this. I mean, it's quite mesmerizing to see how you bring this together. We open at 10 o'clock here at the Scarborough Renaissance Festival, and I'm on the torch until 7.01 every evening. Oh, well, so, thank you, uh, you so much. So you can come and, and please join us. Yes, thank you so much, Mylon. And yep. we're going to watch him finish out this tale here, but there are so many different things. They have tons of artisans. You're going to hear sights and sounds. There's going to be sword fighting. you got the Iron Forge, and look at that. A phoenix with some tail feathers, guys. How cool is that? See the fact that he can craft it, not mm -hmm. just for us to buy it, but to see that artistry at work yeah. there, fantastic. It really is amazing. Brittany, I have one question. I always thought the Renaissance Festival was yes. all outdoors, but it's looked like you're indoors now I have to this put morning. It in the kiln is, because is if we don't cool it carefully, part it could uh, crack and explode. Yeah, there are some stores like Mylan's that is inside. They have some stages all around as well. So you are kind of in and out a little bit. And here, Mylan, he was showing me the heater back here because it's a little chilly this morning. But yes, you are going to want to be dressed That's, for walking around outside, but they yeah. do have some indoor areas too. Well, it, and it gives folks a, a break from the heat this weekend. I mean, diminished tracking those temperatures in the 80s, so that could be really nice. Brittany, thanks for showing us all the cool things that we're going to That's a little coral reef I've been working on over the last couple of days. Um, wow. So I just made this little line. I thought he was talking to me. He's just talking to Brittany. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so very much, Brittany. We'll be right back, folks.